With the interchangeable lens cinema cameras forever dropping in price and availability, the market for lenses designed for cine and video applications is more popular than ever before. In this video, we'll be talking about the differences between stills and cine lenses, as well as things to look out for and consider when picking up your first cine lens. So let's get into it. If you're coming from stills lenses, there are some important things to think about when buying or renting your first set of cinema lenses. We wanted to highlight some of the key differences and the best ways to deal with these changes. Let's start by looking at the physical differences between them. The intended use and application of a lens will shape the way its mechanics are designed, and is probably where the biggest differences between stills and cinema lenses lie. Unlike the multi-use nature of a stills lens, cine lenses are designed specifically for moving image and can involve a completely different workflow and shooting style that often include dedicated crews and operators. Things like size, build quality and surrounding accessories are also considered differently and is why using stills lenses for cinema and video productions can be full of compromises. Cinema lenses are designed with consistency and control in mind. Consistency of size makes lens swapping easier when using support and motion control equipment, and consistent gear ring placement means less time moving motors around. It also makes balancing your rig or stabilization equipment much faster. The use of filtration is relatively easy with stills glass, with the most common method being threaded filters that screw on directly to the front of your lens. The downside of this method is that stills lenses are very inconsistent with their thread diameter, meaning you might have to buy multiple filters in different sizes or use an accessory such as the Revo ring, which essentially is a variable step-up ring. While some cinema lenses do feature threads for screw-on filters, the most common way of adding filtration to a cine lens is with the use of a matte box system. Attaching a matte box can be done with either a rod support system, which can work more universally across most lenses, or by using a clamp-on system which is designed to attach a matte box to the front of your lens directly. With standard front diameters ranging from 80mm all the way up to 162 you'll need to make sure the clamp system you use matches with the front diameter of your lens. Though you can also use accessories such as donuts or black holes, or a variable cuff. These systems are more versatile with how many different lens sizes you can use them with, but will require the matte box to be mounted to bars. Most sets of cinema lenses will use a consistent front diameter across all of their focal lengths in the set, like for example the Canon CNEs or the Sumere Primes, which all have a 114mm front diameter. This means a single matte box can be used when switching between focal lengths of the same set, saving time and resources on a shoot. If you want us to do a more in-depth video about matte boxes and different filtration options, let us know in the comments below. The PL or positive lock mount was introduced by Ari in the 1980s and is the most used lens mount in the mid to high end cinema market, being recognized as pretty much the standard by most lens and camera manufacturers. Compared to the mounts found on stills lenses, the PL mount is a much more secure system with a locking design that greatly reduces any play in the mount that could translate to image shift while focusing or zooming. This is also really important with anamorphic lenses as it could decenter your anamorphic element and you could get skewed images. Where a stills lens would typically be turned to click into its mount, a PL lens is attached by lining up the locating pin in the mount with the corresponding notch on the lens, and then the mount itself is turned to lock the connection. Many lenses will have four of these notches, so be sure to orientate your lens correctly when mounting. With full metal bodies and often with larger lens elements, these heavier cinema lenses have a need for greater mount stability and can also benefit from the use of a lens support for further elimination of image shift and additional support and safety with these larger heavier lenses. The downside of using a locking system over something like EF is for solo operators you will need to use two hands to change lenses instead of just one which you can do with EF. A lens support system is most commonly paired with long and heavy teleprimes and zooms and requires the use of a 15 or 19 mm rod support system and correct support bracket. Many cinema lenses feature an interchangeable mount system, allowing a changeover from one mount to another, like from PL to EF. But the ease of use of that system is an aspect that is often overlooked. 
A selection of Canon Cine lenses can have their mounts changed by a Canon approved service center and are not designed to be done by the user. Although there are other systems on the market that allowed end users to do their own mount changes, but it can be challenging to do properly if it's something you are new to or lack the correct tools needed. The added flexibility that an interchangeable mount brings means it's an attractive option not only for end users who want to use their lenses across multiple camera systems, but also to rental houses who don't want to limit their lenses to one mount, adding versatility and renting potential to their investment. Like we said earlier, cinema lenses are designed for consistency and control, and this can be illustrated really well by looking at the way aperture is handled on a cine lens compared to a stills lens. The first difference that might be noticed is how aperture is measured and marked. Anyone working with a stills lens will be familiar with f numbers or f stops. An f stop is a mathematical value that is calculated by dividing the lens's focal length by the diameter of the entrance pupil to get a theoretical value of light hitting your sensor. Cine lenses, however, use T stops, which is an actual measured amount of transmitted light being received by the sensor through the lens. And this standard is used across all cine lenses with an aim to keep consistent exposure across multiple lenses at the same T-stop values, helping to match exposure precisely when using multiple cameras. This would also mean you could switch to a different focal length with the same T-stop value while shooting a scene and your exposure shouldn't change. Just bear in mind that this is more true for lenses within the same set, as each manufacturer rates their T-stop values slightly differently to one another. When it comes to adjusting your aperture, the different mechanics between stills and cinema lenses offer different levels of control when setting your f or t-stop. With most stills lenses, aperture is controlled through the camera with electronic adjustments being made in discrete steps. While this method can be quick and easy for a single operator, it does limit how precise you can be and the stepped adjustments can be noticeable both visually and audibly if done when recording. The manual control of a cinema lens, however, allows for continuous adjustment of the iris without any hard steps. This means exposure changes can be made smoothly while recording if you need to, and with a nice long rotation distance, you have much more precision over your aperture. With the correct setup, you can also have a manual aperture controlled wirelessly by using a motor and some kind of wireless lens control solution. One of the bigger differences between stills and cinema lenses is with focusing both in terms of mechanics and characteristics. Still lenses are most often electronically driven with quick and accurate autofocus being an important feature, whereas the manual mechanical focus of a cinema lens is designed for precise human operation. Though there are a few hybrid cinema lenses which feature electronic capabilities, such as Canon Cine Servo lenses, which feature the ability for zoom, focus, and iris to be controlled electronically, with some even having autofocus capabilities, while also having full manual control. A lens focus throw is the measurement of the focus ring's rotation from close focus to infinity in degrees. Cine lenses typically have a much longer focus throw for smoother, more precise adjustments, with extra room on the focus ring for better spacing of markings, which is really important to someone using these marks to pull focus. These marks can either be in metric or imperial, with some lenses featuring dual scales, but if they don't, then make sure you get your lens with the markings relevant to your region. The focus ring on cine lenses tend to have a hard stop at either end of the focus range, whereas most stills lenses will continue to rotate beyond close focus or infinity. Not having this hard stop means your focus ring position is not directly attached to the focus scale on your lens, and any added marks on your lens or follow focus could be lost. This could be solved by adding a follow focus system with hard stops. While cine lenses can be used manually and by solo operators, they are designed more for crew operation and will perform very well in this scenario, with focus motors, wireless controls, range finders, and other focusing tools enabling team operation. What focusing tools you need will come down to the type of production you are on. Though, if you're on a smaller set with minimal crew, then a low cost wireless focus solution like the Tilter Nucleus M or a solid manual follow focus could be the way to go. We are planning on doing a series on follow focus solutions soon, so make sure you're subscribed for that. If you have watched any of our previous lens reviews, you have often heard the word breathing. Breathing is a term used to describe the slight focal length change that can happen when moving through a lens's focus range. It's a characteristic that is common in stills lenses as it's something that will not be noticed when capturing a single frame, 
but with moving image, it can be seen as distracting. So most Cine lenses are optically designed to minimize focused breathing. However, like a lot of optical imperfections, this could be a desired effect in some situations, and one Cine lens can handle it better to another. Another optical trait that cinema lenses are designed to do better is parfocality. A parfocal lens is a zoom lens that can maintain its focus while having its focal length changed, and it's an important feature to many video shooters. Parfocality is less of a concern with stills lenses due to the use of autofocus. Take this CN10 from Canon as an example. If we were to zoom all the way in on our chart, focus, and then zoom all the way out, you will see how the focus is held consistently. Repeating this same test again with our 24 to 70 stills lens will show you how the focus shifts as we zoom in. Engineering a zoom lens to be parfocal is incredibly challenging and is something that is later reflected in its price tag. Another advantage with cine zooms is that most often than not, all the moving parts relating to the zooming are kept internal, whereas a lot of stills lenses tend to trombone as you zoom, like you can see happening with this 24 to 70. Internal zooming and focusing means you will spend less time adjusting accessories such as a matte box or motors on set and will also help keep your rig balance more consistent. One thing to note is that having your cinema lenses properly calibrated is more important than with stills lenses as well. Not having your lens calibrated correctly could result in issues such as focus scales being out or zooms not being par focal. Our in-house pro repairs team has a specialized lens department who can service your lenses, making sure they are within manufacturer specifications and accurate for you. Optical stabilization is a technology that predominantly features in stills lenses with use for both photography and video work, but has never made its way over to cinema lenses. And there are a few reasons for this. The first one being that mid to high end cine lenses are designed with a certain assumption that they will be used in shooting scenarios with other camera stabilization or support equipment. The lack of optical stabilization allows for the lens design to be better focused on performance with the fewer moving parts also increasing reliability on set. Some hybrid cinema lenses such as the Canon CNE Servo Zoom do feature in lens stabilization because they are aimed at more of a run and gun documentary market compared to their larger cinema zooms and prime lenses. Without optical stabilization, the easiest way to steady your movements while shooting handheld is to add weight to your camera rig. Otherwise, you may need to look at investing in other stabilization equipment, such as a steady cam, gimbal, slider, or just a trusty pair of sticks. Image quality differences between stills and cine lenses can usually be quite obvious. However, this isn't always the case. If we take a look at the Canon CNE primes and the L series primes, there are a lot of optical similarities between them, but are worlds apart when it comes to comparing mechanics and quality control. Here are a few things we can say generally that are different between stills and cinema lenses. The first being the level of quality control that manufacturers do when it comes to both the optical elements and the overall look of lenses across an entire set. More often than not, you're buying cinema lenses as a partial or complete set, unlike with stills glass, which are never really sold as sets. The consistency of how lenses look across a set is very important for productions that want to keep the look of their image the same across a range of focal lengths. This relates to everything that we look at when evaluating image quality. Canon has done a really good job of making their lenses decently consistent across their sets, and even their cine zooms match pretty well with their CNE primes. Canon's Sumire lenses share lots of similarities to their CNE lenses, but do feature different coatings and a switch to spherical elements over aspherical elements. We can see this when we look at the Sumire's wide open, as they feature lots of spherical aberration, which gives them their soft, bloomy highlights. We can also see it if we look at the bokeh between the two. This onion skinning that is featured on the CNEs is caused by the grinding process that is used in the production of aspheric elements. You can also see this in Canon's K35 primes too. This design change with the Cimarais wouldn't have just been Canon's decision. They would have researched and developed the look cinematographers wanted from these higher end lenses and tweaked these lenses from that feedback. It's factors like this that contribute to giving cinema lenses their higher price tags. Though there are other things like the higher QC tolerances, higher variety and quality of manufacturing materials, longer design and production times, shorter production runs, as well as being part of a smaller market are all reasons why cine lenses are typically valued much higher to a stills equivalent. 
We'll be doing a more detailed breakdown on this topic, so make sure you're subscribed for updates on that. We hope this video has helped explain the differences between stills and cine lenses. Lens choice is an incredibly subjective thing when it comes to image characteristics and quality. However, a lens's mechanics are a little bit more objective with different productions and filmmakers requiring different feature sets. For more tailored advice on lenses and their surrounding accessories, you can get in contact with us via the details in the description below, or feel free to ask any more questions in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for all of our future content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.